His Excellency Ion de la Driva, Ambassador of Spain in India, uh, Honorable Professor V. N. Rajshekran Pillai, Vice Chancellor Indra Gandhi National Open University, Dr. Oscar Pujol, Director Instituto Cervantes, Mrs. Anna V. Gelio, Head of Studies Instituto Cervantes, Registrar Administration, Shri Uday Singh Tolia, Pro Vice Chancellors, Heads, Directors of Schools, Heads of Divisions, Guests, my colleagues from IGNU, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a special teleconferencing session because not only are we here to sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the Indira Gandhi National Open University and the Instituto Cervantes, but we are also launching the program Certificate in Spanish Language Online. I would first of all like to honor the dignitaries with flowers. Uh, Dipanvita Srivastava has just joined as lecturer in the School of Foreign Languages to give the bouquet to His Excellency. Thank you so much. She is a lecturer in French. Takir Alam, research teaching assistant uh, for Arabic languages. To Professor Rajshikran Pillai. Dipanvita. Dr. Oscar Pujol. Anna the Sail Pigolio, the Panvita to the Registrar, thank you. Uh, the School of Foreign Languages is among the 10 schools set up by the Vice Chancellor Professor Rajshekran Pillai soon after his assuming office. Uh, he is a person with an alacrity of imagination uh, and is quite aware of the challenges faced by the global scenario. School of Foreign Languages uh, was uh, set up with this in mind that in, in the current global scenario uh, there is a lot of economic, social and political interdependence and to cut across cultures, countries, barriers, language is the tool to make the global reality actualize. So he set the agenda for the School of Humanities because the School of uh, foreign languages was not there at that time, to initiate programs at the certificate level in French, Spanish, German, Japanese, Chinese, Arabic. And we, at our end, uh, started the uh, mission very earnestly because I would like to say here that there is no precedent in this country or anywhere in the world where you can teach foreign languages uh, in a multimedia distance education <coughs> mode. We tried to look at the existing institutions and whether it is CIFL, Central Institute of English Foreign Languages, Hyderabad, or whether it is JNU or any other university, foreign languages are taught in the distance mode only at the postgraduate level and that too with residential qualifications. I'm happy to state that we launched a certificate in German language program in less than six months. And it is an innovative program. Uh, in, uh, we launched it in July 2007. I would say innovative because for the first time, radio-based lessons 
supplemented by workbook exercises and videos and extensive uh, counseling, which is contact classes. Uh, it's a new model altogether, and it is a success story. Already about 300 students have passed out in two batches, and the program is launched in Tamil Nadu and Kerala and Bangalore, and we are going to extend it uh, further in the north, and it will become a national program soon. The second program that the School of Foreign Languages has launched is a certificate program in Japanese language. It's a one-year program requiring the, the scripts. Japanese script requires additional work time. So it's one-year program, and again, it is innovative in the sense we have kept to the IGNU self-instructional material designs. But at the same time, we have very heavy input of teacher contact hours, audios, and videos are integrated with a lot of electronic media support. The third program is what we are going to launch today, that is the certificate in, in Spanish online. I must say here that the kind of support I have received from Dr. Oscar Pujol and uh, Anna Rigalio uh, is amazing. Of course, it has taken us some time because the MOU had to be ratified by Madrid and it has taken some time because some legal angle is involved. But we are now going to use your platform, the Awe platform, uh, virtual classroom uh, uh, facilities through internet, through new information technologies, and reach out to the students. And also, uh, our whole mission is, our vice chancellor told us that in metropolitan cities, there are already so many institutions doing uh, teaching foreign languages. Even in private houses, people are teaching foreign languages. But to be able to reach out to the distant most nook and corner of this country and small cities is uh, quite an uphill task, and we have aimed at that. That's why we are not coming straight to big cities and metropolitan cities. We are going to the smallest places one can think of uh, to begin with. Here, uh, I must say, it, it, it gives me a lot of satisfaction that uh, there is a lot of response coming already. Uh, on a daily basis, I'm uh, getting about 15 to 20 calls, and the registration is on right now. About the program, Dr. Oscar and Anna will give you more details, and maybe she will also demonstrate a little bit of the program. Uh, but it gives me a lot of satisfaction that what our Honorable Vice Chancellor thought that IGNU has entered the age of Internet and online education, and we are starting that uh, for a foreign language through a new school that has just been set up. Also, the rationale behind going for international cooperation uh, is that we have the infrastructure and they have the expertise. And when the two come together and join hands, we can really disseminate in a big way. Uh, the other two programs which are on the anvil, my French program for Hindi phone students is ready. And uh, I was told uh, to wait till July so that uh, the administrative and academic uh, uh, you know, formalities can be taken care of. Uh, so I'm going to launch uh, the French language for Hindi speaking students in July. And uh, also, it is also English. We'll go to the Northeast and we'll go to the Hindi belt. I'm sure that program also will have a lot of success. <laughs> uh, for the Spanish, now the Instituto Cervantes has come forth with such help as training all the counselors that we'll jointly identify for future uh, e-counseling and also to let us have access to their program through our server and then as the numbers increase, we will go across the country and take more numbers. So this is the agreement. I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, I just want to say two things. I have here Professor Uma Kanjilal, uh, who has helped me a lot. As a matter of fact, she is the repository for our uh, Internet-based programs. Uma, please. Uh, she is Professor Uma Kanjilal. And she helped me in... Uh, preparing
sharing the platform, the site, and she, Anna, me, we would we set and we frame, uh, design the whole uh, site, and the connectivities that are required. And I must also thank Professor Khan if he's here. Uh, Professor Khan uh, has been with us for almost two decades now, and for all initiatives you are, of. A, you are yeah, <laughs> new I know that. for all innovations, <laughs> initiatives. When we take a decision, if Professor Khan is with us, uh, it gives us that satisfaction to say yes, go ahead. So yes, I have taken his nod and consent, and he has also helped in the MOU. And of course, Mr. Ansar, who's not here, Mr. Ansar from the legal cell. So um, with this, now I request uh, Dr. Pujol and. Um, our registrar, Uday Singh Tolia ji, to sign the MOU. signed for both English and Spanish. Yes. The Spanish version will go to Madrid. like to say that in addition to the program, we have also prepared a study manual and a program guide, uh, which is also on the internet for our students, but we are used to having things handy with us, so this is also going to go to all the students. It's a copy for you. Now request Dr. Oscar Pujol to deliver his address. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Varadwaj. <laughs> it's really a, a big pleasure to be here today, and I would like to start, you know, um, giving all my reconnaissance to the Vice -chan the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Indira Gandhi National Open University. Dr. Rajashekaran Pillai, also to His Excellency, the Ambassador of Spain, Ion de la Riva, and then, of course, to the person who has been the soul of this agreement, Professor Bharadwaj. It's been one year and a half, you know, of work, but I should say that this agreement, um, um, signing this agreement, the work that the agreement implies is already almost done, and today the course will be launch and will be clicked and the course will be available pretty soon. I would like, like also to, to give my thanks to Uma Kanjilal, who has been really an incredible help, especially for all his knowledge of the technicalities. And of course also to Professor Khan, who has been not only, you know, a companion, but he put always a touch of humor and goodwill in this, in this agreement. Also to Professor Ansar and for his help, you know, in framing the legal aspects of the agreement. So today we are here, and we have just signed this MOU with IGNU, and the MOU is going to implement a course of the Spanish virtual classroom. And now I think, you know, we have to analyze a little bit all the terms of this sentence. And I would like to start with the importance of Spanish. This is a, a course online, fully online, to teach the Spanish language um, in the white. And I think 
more and more now people in India are realizing the importance of this language, which is, comes as a new language to many people in India because they never heard of it before. But suddenly, you know, the Hispanic continent is emerging. And we have a language here spoken by 450 million, which is the second language of communication as a vehicle of international communication. The language is spoken in more than 20 countries. So it has a multinational literature and a multinational culture. Only in the States, more than 35 million of people do speak Spanish, and a new Hispanic market is emerging in the States itself. I would like to say that more than 20 million foreigners are learning Spanish worldwide, and also an incredible revolution is happening in a very a big country, a very important country for India, Brazil, where the numbers of Spanish learners are expected to increase in the next two years up to 11 million because Spanish has been made compulsory at the primary education in Brazil. The course that we are launching right now today, um, it has more than, than one lakh users only in Brazil. Because I say Brazil, you know, it's surrounded by Spanish-speaking countries, and they realize the importance of this language for the global economy. Therefore, you know, I mean, I'm very happy to be able somehow to go beyond Delhi and use the infrastructure of IGNU to touch and reach remote areas of India. I think this is a big step today that we are making. It's only the beginning. The present course, it's a, it's a pilot um, test only for 200 students, but as we are going to train counselors, we will be able to take more and more numbers. I don't need to say that, but um, for the Spanish people, we are here in perhaps the biggest university in the world with uh, one million and a half students, not only in India, but also in foreign countries. And Nignu, a young university, is expanding more and more. And we want to, to be part of that expansion, and that, that expansion also helps the expansion and the dissemination of our Spanish language for the benefit of both. I think that very few people still know what the Instituto Cervantes is. We are newcomers. We are very soon going to open our center at Hanuman Road number 48, right in the heart of the city. And I hope that our center will also work as an antenna of IGNU in the heart of Delhi. And just to cut it brief and to say it very quickly, so that the Instituto Cervantes is the only official um, governmental center to teach Spanish and disseminate Hispanic culture abroad. We have more than 72 centers all over the world in 42 countries, and the Instituto Cervantes has realized now the importance of a country like India and the need also to be present here. When we open our center, um, we will make it available, you know, there are 18 classrooms there, auditorium will be there, a library, and we'll invite, you know, all virtual students of IGNU to be there presentially and uh, avail of our facilities. The course that we are introducing to, today, it's called in Spanish, Aula, Aula Virtual Cervantes, which we translate at, as Spanish Virtual Classroom. As I said, it's a very innovative um, method of teaching. It has, um, as I say, more than one, one lakh and a half users all over the world. And the Spanish Virtual Classroom is an internet-based educational infrastructure. It's not only a simple course set up to provide the Spanish courses. These courses can be completed in different ways, like attendance, semi-attendance, and distance, which is the mode we are choosing to implement with IGNU. Four levels are available right from the beginner to the proficiency level, and it's the beginner level that we are implementing along with IGNO. The, le the lessons have an easy-to-follow structure which allows students to complete the learning units in short periods of time. And I will say, Anna will tell a little bit more about, about the structure of the course, but I will say that each lesson has tests, three automatic tests, and each lesson has also three communic communicative exercises that the, that the student does along with the companions online and also with the tutor. The lessons also provide one graphic adventure. That's, that's it. 
every lesson ends with an episode of an ongoing interactive graphic story in which the student you know, develops their communicative skills in a play form. Each lesson has also a kind of supplementary materials that allow the student to consult and practice specific linguistic items like grammar, vocabulary, phonetics, spelling, etc. It's also very important for the Cervantes because, as I say, there is a whole Hispanic continent there that the, our courses have a very pronounced cultural content. And one of the aims of the AVE courses is to educate students about the culture of Spanish-speaking countries. As I say, it's not a single culture. There is a whole scope of cultures there. And we do that by incorporating materials from different socio-cultural sources, such as the press, literature, cinema, music, and others. And therefore, the course provides a realistic reflection of Hispanic culture and society in all the rich variety. I would like to end up saying that not only learning Spanish is becoming increasingly important in terms of global economy, but it can also play a role in your own personal development. The Spanish passion for living is contagious one. And once you start learning about the Spanish language and culture, you won't ever want to stop. So let's not stop and go ahead with our courses. Thank you. I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to deliver the Chairperson's address. Your Excellency, Yon De La Riva, Ambassador to India, Dr. Oscar Pujar, Mrs. Anna Regula, uh, Dr. Bharat Duach, Mr. Tolia Registrar, my colleagues from the University, other experts from Institute, uh, Institute of Cervantes and uh, Spanish virtual classroom, other invitees. First of all, let me welcome uh, uh, His Excellency the Ambassador uh, to the Indira Gandhi National Open University campus. I am extremely glad that the Indira Gandhi National Open University Institute of Cervantes and the Spanish virtual classroom, Hola Virtual de Espanol, have joined uh, to launch programs in Spanish language. Uh, there is no need of emphasizing the importance of learning Spanish language, understanding the culture of the country, understanding the culture of the large number of Spanish-speaking countries, and also uh, as a medium for business communications, Spanish language is very, very important. I congratulate the School of Humanities, uh, Dr. Renu Bharadwaj, for, uh, for hatching the entire school of uh, foreign languages three, with, with three, three foreign languages, and now the school, in, uh, school of foreign languages is in position. The activities of the school of foreign languages are in full sync now, even though the faculty is set to join fully. I also take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Oscar Pujol and uh, Mrs. Anna Regulo and uh, our colleagues uh, from the Egan Kosh, Professor Ruma Kanjilal, and all the faculty members who have contributed to uh, this pro program, certificate program in Spanish language. Uh, as Dr. Oscar Pujal rightly mentioned, this, is a, this particular program is a global program in the sense that uh, even though we are, uh, we are offering it in, in our format, this, the same courses of offered all over the world. That is, that is the understanding uh, I got. That's very important. And this is a beginning, and uh, we are also trying to develop very specific programs for training of teachers, uh, particularly uh, for teaching in the schools, uh, in uh, language for school, uh, school children. And then we are trying to develop a very specific program for academic counselors. And this also gives us an opportunity to understand uh, the online capabilities of the uh, uh, Spanish universities. I understand that there is an exclusive university, University of Catal Catal uh, Catalonia, Cat University of Catalonia, a virtual university which is very famous uh, for its online 
capabilities. Entire university programs are online, and uh, uh, the vice chancellor of the university is scheduled to come visit India, and we look forward to uh, collaboration in a much more uh, broader perspective uh, to take care of such uh, capabilities in our university as well. Our university, for, uh, for your information, Your Excellency, our university is uh, pro uh, probably the largest university in the whole world in terms of its students' numbers. It is not online. It is not fully online. It is, we, we started online in a very small way, uh, to, uh, probably during the last few months. Uh, probably this, uh, we can call this would be the first full online program uh, we are offering, uh, this certificate program in Spanish language. We have started for other programs as well now. Uh, we have over 2 million students on our roll now. Uh, 200, 2 million, 2 million students on our roll. And um, uh, our technological reach is also very high. For example, through this channel which you, which we deliver this particular activity today, and through the DTH, uh, we can reach several million homes. The TV through the TV, we can reach several million homes, and all our programs are in the uh, are webcast in the in, in the internet also. We have several channels exclusively for providing education opportunities. Uh, for large number of uh, people, uh, far and wide, not only in this country, across the globe. Uh, we reach, our reach is particularly very important and very significant in the rural regions of the country. Uh, we cater to the educational requirements of underprivileged sections of the society, uh, those who cannot come to the conventional classrooms. Uh, then we cater to the educational and training requirements of large number of people who are in, who are working. So workplace education is a major responsibility of Indira Gandhi National Open University. In addition to uh, providing the large number of programs, we also provide capabilities to conventional universities uh, for uh, taking up open and distance learning programs. How exactly a teacher who is working in a college or a university or in a school, he or she can make use of open and distance learning capabilities, including online capabilities, to enhance uh, the quality of the teaching learning process in the classroom, as well as to enhance the quantity <coughs> of education delivery. These are the two challenges of Indira Gandhi National Open University, to enhance the quality of the teaching learning process in the classrooms across the, across the country, and to enhance the quantity of education delivery. And this we are reasonably uh, doing um, rather doing very well in this area. Uh, for the last 25 years, this university has created a rich repository of uh, learning materials covering a uh, large number of certificate programs, diploma programs, degree programs, and postgraduate programs. And this particular, today we, are, we have signed an MOU with uh, the Institute of Cervantes, and this would be a beginning for starting not only really, uh, courses in uh, Spanish language, definitely we would uh, uh, come to higher levels of knowledge uh, dissemination, uh, maybe at the, at the graduate and the postgraduate levels about Spanish literature, Spanish culture, and uh, we sincerely believe that this would be a great medium. The online, uh, the virtual Spanish virtual classroom would be a great uh, medium for promoting such activities, and we will take up uh, several other um, academic exchange activities as well as capacity tra capacity building programs jointly with the Institute of Cervantes and Indira Gandhi National Open University's uh, various departments. In addition to the School of Foreign Languages, we have also very specific, uh, very, uh, very unique departments. For example, we have a School of Translation Studies and Training, uh, which looks after uh, translation from I Indian English to uh, English and Hindi to the other uh, foreign languages. We have also inter-Indian language translation capability. We want to build inter-Indian language uh, translation building capabilities. So this is also very important. For example, when we talk about uh, the different languages in this, in this country, uh, we, in addition to English and Hindi, which are the common uh, used languages, 
we have large number of languages which are which are being spoken by millions of people and it is also very important that there has to be effective interaction with such languages and uh, rich language like uh, spanish language and its culture and therefore uh, by interaction with indira gandhi national open university through, through in an interdisciplinary way uh, we would be able to build strong linkages in education training cultural exchange academic exchange and a number of other activities and once again i thank the, the uh, your excellency the ambassador as well as the entire uh, functionaries of the institute of cervantes and the spanish virtual classroom for the excellent activity they have undertaken i am also glad that this this program uh, which we thought about almost 9 8 almost an year back uh, i i vividly remember uh, dr oscar pujol and his colleagues uh, were regularly uh, attending our academic council meetings and our statutory meetings which uh, which facilitated the whole process that also give uh, give uh, the institute an opportunity to understand the ramifications of the academic rigor and the process by, uh, under which we uh, the in, the in the indian universities function and particularly uh, the rigor uh, of indira gandhi national open university in ensuring the quality and standards of the various programs my congratulations and best wishes to all those who have contributed and to this uh, rich beginning and we will continue this exercise thank you very much uh, i would just like to uh, add here what our honorable vice chancellor has said yes he insisted and our european languages programs are within the european framework of reference for languages and our students will also Uh, be eligible to get international certification uh, the igno certification along with the institute of cervantes but they will also be given the opportunity to take the exam and get international certification and second thing is for teacher training program also we are in the pro- we are about to sign an mou with the university of vienna goethe institute and igno for german language and that could become a model for our other european uh, language programs now i request uh, his excellency uh, mr ion de la riva to address the audience namaskar uh, dr pilai professor baratwatch dr pujol my first words have to be of congratulation i feel very happy and uh, very satisfied at uh, this occasion in which uh, the institute of cervantes and the indira gandhi national open university have signed an, an agreement a memorandum uh, to bring spain to india through your wonderful coverage in television and other forms of network with modern technologies i will shift the focus of the talk because a lot has been said about education and uh, the opportunities education provides to everyone but very little has been said about pleasure the pleasure of learning and i think that is one of the main reasons that people embark on the learning of languages it's uh, a lot of pr- pressure i think the ha- happiness per capita the ratio of happiness per capita uh, in learning languages is higher than in any other field of knowledge because languages serve above all to communicate to people and uh, we talk a lot about technologies we talk, take advantage of them as we do here in the cervantes but the main thing is that all human beings need to communicate much more uh, need to have dialogue need to understand each other and as a diplomat i say in this moment of meltdown crisis war uh, uncertainty in which we are living at the beginning of this 21st century learning about each other through languages is not only necessary uh, it is also very pleasant and for young people who will embark into learning spanish i have to say that spanish is the language of the americas and uh, the americas for everyone from the middle ages onwards for asia for europe were the country of utopia where everything was possible we talk a lot about the american dream well that american dream is lived by many people in the spanish language and i think by choosing to learn spanish people will also feel the rich baggage that spain has to offer to the world in terms of its hugely humane culture 
a culture that may have not reached uh, the peak in technology, like German or Japanese. Uh, it's not as widely spoken as English, which is the language of the Commonwealth and therefore of the world in certain aspects. But I think Spanish has a lot to offer in terms of uh, mankind's progress with its own self. We have uh, Cervantes, is the name of this great writer, perhaps the most important uh, novel in the world is Don Quixote. Hmm? Don Quixote strove to make the world a better place. He saw the world through better eyes. He mistook a peasant woman to be a high lady. He thought windmills were giants. And he was fighting injustice and he was fighting the ugliness that surrounds us when we cease to see the world as a wonderful paradise, which it is. So I think by learning Spanish, uh, students will reach a higher level of consciousness. Not only they will have a wonderful language as an opportunity tool with the Americas, but they will also uh, evolve as human beings. And having said that, it is also, I think, my duty to pay an homage, a tribute to Oscar Pujol, because he's uh, very important persons for India and Spanish relationships. He knows and understands and loves India uh, very well. And it is no chance that this agreement is signed under his guidance at the Instituto Cervantes with Ana Reguillo. You know, we are very lucky to have people like them. We are very lucky that the Indira Gandhi National University has taken this step. And I will say one sentence in Spanish, which will be perhaps the first online uh, language coach. Hoy es un gran día. Today is a great day. Hoy es un gran día. Uh, and I feel very happy about it. Thank you. I would now request uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador, and our Vice Chancellor to click, to, to launch the program by clicking here on the mouse. Yes, yes, yes. Where do we click? Here. Yeah. There it is. I would request Anna to demonstrate uh, uh, a little bit the program. Mm -hmm. A few things you'd like to say about the program. Yeah. Buenos dias. Um, I would like to um, show briefly the uh, some of the uh, chapters in the uh, Spanish online course. Um, as you can see here, um, this is the course we are going to offer, A11. Then uh, here you see three different options. Yeah, yeah OK. So it's uh, just we'll follow the. Uh, the arrow um, is Curso A11, course A11. This is the one that we are going to offer for six months. Um, then uh, we'll go into, roughly into these uh, chapters. It's more into the methodologically appro methodolo methodological approach of um, all the uh, concepts of learning a foreign language. Uh, there are three chapters here. So you can see material didactico. This is the material itself, the teaching uh, stuff. Then um, seguimiento y evaluación. That means um, evaluation. And then another chapter is communication. We are online, fully online. Uh, even if, the, uh, even if um, mm, it seems that uh, for learning a language we need um, somebody else in front of us, the system provides uh, some tools that um, complement this uh, lack of uh, interaction somehow. I'll go first into communication. It's pretty known to everybody. The uh, different options, correo electronico is email, then chat, and this is the presentation of the tutor. We are going to have 200 students. 
all of them in groups of 14 uh, people that are going to be with a tutor. Um, the tutors have a special um, training, and then um, they will be coach and assess and uh, follow up personally in their improvement of the language. Then we'll go into this uh, evaluation as uh, um, the director of Instituto was saying before uh, about the structure, their self-evaluation. Um, the students can see here the times they have gone into the activities of each of the uh, themes. Then there is a complementary material that I will go through later on. And this is very important. Um, when you are uh, doing something online, you need to know uh, what's happening to the rest of the group. So here it says percentage of material done uh, for you res uh, uh, related to the group. So like you, you have done this one and your group this one. So no need to say that um, in India uh, this evaluation and checking of uh, the grading is quite important. Um, so we provide this one for each other. I mean, each one has che can, can check it um, individually. Then we're going to something that is also uh, innovative here. Um, there is a glossary, like an active dictionary there. We'll put, uh, press the word abogado. And uh, all the information has been done uh, through audiovisual. So there is, no me there is no way of losing the meaning on getting lost. So this is also available there. And then we'll go into the materials. OK, so there for this course and the others, uh, A11, three topics, uh, three, yeah, three main ones, tema uno, tema dos, tema tres. And then the complementary material. We'll go into this. Um, also, um, there is um, a way of checking with the computer and recording your own performance in pronunciation. Some of the uh, consonants are more difficult than others, but the um, point of internet of repeating and repeating is here, so no way of uh, having uh, any problem. Also with intonation. You know that uh, Spanish is spoken in 20, more than 20 countries. Um, the uh, the uh, Spanish that has been chosen here is a standard Spanish for beginners course. Once we reach advanced, uh, the other options are also available. So you can easily recognize people who speaks from Mexico or from other uh, Spanish-speaking countries. But from the beginning is um, standard. No? Then we'll go uh, here. We can see the index of all the um, level. You see culture, as our ambassador was uh, saying before, is uh, one of the main um, um, uh, how to say, main uh, offers of the Spanish-speaking countries. And it covers all the time Spain and Hispano America. Then we'll go into the, um, uh, as Professor Reno, Reno was saying, the uh, common framework of reference for European languages. This is the approach. Like things you know, or things you are going to be doing, grammar and lexico. Mm -hmm. So everything is uh, following this approach. Then we'll go into a very um, sample. Okay, we'll go into first session. First, uh, um, I'll go into this for you to <coughs> listen to it. Zero. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Cinco. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK. Here in, into this uh, corner, you can find a different uh, tools. 
like a keyword. There are some letters in Spanish, well, one letter in Spanish that is unique. It's the, uh, the one of the, uh, like the logo here is letter, letter Ñ is unique. So, and also some accents, you just press here and you have all, the, all of them done. Then repetir, you can repeat and repeat endlessly. And then translation uh, here. Then we'll go into another option of exercises, like this one. The greeting in Spanish, the most common one is hola. So once we do it, we press here. If it's green, like the traffic lights, well done. If it's wrong, I'll just do it uh, another one. So it's asking me to change it. I'm pretty smart, so I'll go into solutions. All of them are given. Uh, this is uh, some activities. You can do that because they are not recorded. They are not part of the evaluation. So the input and the uh, animo, the good spirit for, and the pleasure for learning has this button here to keep you uh, continuing on that. We'll go into another sample. Okay, so um, the grammar uh, itself is also presented here. Um, always there is a uh, symbol of information, and uh, it's written here, and also in the complementary material for summary. You can print it, you can study it, you can see later on. Then um, there are some videos. Um, we don't have time to show them now. But the videos have been also studied methodologically. You see them at first without sound. So all, the, uh, all your knowledge, previous knowledge, is put in into account. So you start deducting things. Then you see it with uh, sound. You check and confirm your answers. And then also there are some activities that keep you active this uh, knowledge. For instance, put in the order of the scenes you have seen. There is no much need of knowledge, <coughs> just common sense. Huh? So, and again, the system allows you to uh, do the right uh, one. So let's say uh, if, it's al al if it allows me to do it properly. Huh? Okay, so and then continue and continue. Hmm? Then again, it continues with an image and then the dialogue. So everything is in progress. You are not feeling lost. Hmm? And then for, uh, to finalize, I would like to say that um, the uh, manual, we have prepared the study manual with the help of Professor uh, Alka Jaspal, um, is here online. You can see it, and all this has been translated into English, like the main uh, grammar points, also specification about the symbols. There is no way to get lost. Hmm? So here we'll do like um, now is time for any uh, of the uh, people who are watching us to <coughs> enroll in the Spanish online course. Here is the web page. And I would like to thank all the team of IGNU and, of course, my colleagues at Instituto Cervantes for this. has been a big effort, but now is there for all of you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, Doki, can we have the mementos, please? directors are all here and uh, we thought we will have some interactivity with the regional centers but they are all here and uh, it doesn't look like there, will, there are too many questions coming from that side uh, if there are any from the, audience. from the audience any questions any suggestions most welcome
I think we'll close it in five minutes. Hi, question. Uh, it's very good uh, today's historical day for Spanish and uh, country. We have uh, major Indian languages. Uh, and uh, I think uh, all languages are very important and sweet, what we speak in the whole world. But the point is, we are going to learn Spanish and spread Spanish in this country. But uh, uh, what do you think about the uh, Indian languages? and uh, the importance of Indian uh, languages because without the interaction between the two languages it's uh, uh, difficult to understand each other so what is your opinion about the Indian language and especially uh, m uh, most of the Indian languages uh, we are going to launch uh, so large people speaking uh, uh, just like Bhojpuri, Matli I think you don't know uh, even heard about this language uh, but uh, we have a rich tradition of uh, literature. So what is your opinion about the Indian languages? Thank you. Well, uh, I'm very glad you raised this question because it gives me the opportunity to say something that I've been wanting to say also before, which is that the Cervantes is not solely devoted to Spanish-Castilian language, although Spanish-Castilian language is the main vehicle for uh, people in Spain and for people in the Americas, as I said before. But in Spain we also have a rich and varied culture we have uh, different nations within Spain, and they have their own cultural tradition and their own languages. Uh, Mr. Pujol is a Catalan. Catalan is also a very important language in Europe. I am a Basque. I also speak Basque, which is a minority language in the north of Spain and south of France. There is Galician Spanish in the northwest area, which is very similar to Portuguese in that area. So we also understand very well the importance that India attaches to its many languages. In fact, the Cervantes and the cultural section of the Spanish Embassy have been publishing in Bengali, and we wish to continue this tradition of taking up different languages uh, uh, in, uh, in India uh, to promote our own language and our own culture. And I suppose that uh, Mr. Oscar Pujol could add something to this, but let me say that we have uh, uh, utmost respect and uh, interest in India's languages, not just Hindi. Uh, we all have to learn Hindi being here because it's also very important in the world uh, but we are mm, very conscious of the fact that Bengali is a widely spoken language uh, not only in India and that there are languages like Tamil, Marathi you know that also deserve uh, recognition and respect maybe you want to add something yes I will just I mean I would like to tell you you should think of Spain as a micro India as you were yeah. saying it's also peninsula like India, right? We have our Himalaya at another scale, the Pyrenees. And as the ambassador, His Excellency, was saying very rightly, you know, there are four languages. So it's also a multilingual nation like India itself. Now to come to your question, what about the, the dissemination of Indian languages in Spain? I would like to say that, and I have here Professor Dinkra and Alka Jaspal was from Genoa University, there are people who started the teaching of Spanish in this country, especially through Jenny University. I would like to say that we are still behind you in the, in the teaching of Indian languages. I think Spanish is much m more widely taught in India than Indian languages in Spain. But that I would say that about six years ago we made a start, and I think it's a very positive one. Now Hindi is being taught in Barcelona, in Asia House, it's being taught also at the University of Barcelona. It's also being taught at the University of Valladolid and also in Madrid. It's a very, you know, it's a start. It's very recent. It's a new phenomenon. And I think there is a lot of interest for Indian languages right now in Spain. And I would say not only in Hindi. As the ambassador said, Bengali is also a very fascinating language. Perhaps by the Tagor heritage is there. And more and more people come to know Tamil not only as a modern language, but also as a classical language, because let's not forget that India has at least two classical languages, like Sanskrit and Tamil. And I would like to take since uh, this opportunity to say that perhaps in future time, with the help of IGNU, we could also start online courses and distant courses of Hindi and to, to begin with in, in, in Spain. I mean, I, I, I really have, I avail myself of this opportunity, but the interest is there. 
but finally we need your help to be able to implement those courses in Spain. Professor Khan has a question. Professor, one, one second. Professor Khan. Just that the Germany observed that once a student is enrolled for a course and all, after the course is over, there is no follow up with the students and gradually the link goes away. So what I would like to suggest is those students whom you enroll for the certificate program, please uh, develop a long-term bondage with them through electronically passing on the materials to them in Spanish, gradually about interesting facts about the place, other news items, some photographs. This way you can have a long-term bondage and they can keep in touch with the language and that will go a long way in developing cultural ties as well as linguistic uh, capabilities growing. Thanks. My question is, uh, Don Quixote was known to the world through English translation. And if I am not mistaken, I believe a number of great Spanish classic writers are there who were not really translated enough in other languages, even in English. Uh, are you exactly doing anything about that? As particularly in Indian languages, as uh, Professor Pujol is well uh, a versatile man in the Indian languages, particularly coming from Sanskrit as it is. Uh, in that condition, perhaps, you have a wider opportunity to get them translated into Indian languages as, at large, and uh, we do not have enough knowledge about Spanish literature and the culture through that. Thank you. Um, I would like to say that um, we have here also Professor Dinger, as I said, you know, and a number of works are being translated from Spanish language, not only into English, but in, in Indian languages, no, in Hindi. Even recently, Professor Dingra translated Catalan into Hindi, Ramon Llull, and that both the cultural section of the Spanish Embassy and the Cervantes are running, you know, a regular program of publications into Indian languages. Of course, this is a first step. Right now, you know, the first translation, direct translation from uh, Don Quixote into Hindi is being made. The first part has been published. And also, as far as I know, the first direct translation f into Bengali, it's also being prepared. The both first volumes have already issued. No? And I would like to say that this is a two-way traffic in the sense that we will also like to promote the translation of literary works in Indian languages, not English. And I, and I think I know that many of you consider English as an Indian language. But we have a lot of translation from um, um, Anglo-Indian literature into Spanish. But that it's also a project. We are trying to translate for the first time Tagore from Bengali into Spanish. We have a, a strong presence of Tagore in Spanish, and the translations were done by the famous writer Juan Ramón Jiménez, the Nobel Prize from Spain, still very little known in India. But our library will, will have the name of the Juan Ramón Jiménez as an homage to the person who introduced Tagore in Spain. But those translations were done from English, not from Bengali. So, as I say, it, this is the same with the, with, the, with the teaching of Indian languages in Spain. I think that we are beginning to discover each other. I say Spain is very new to India. And, and let's start, I think, and this collaboration with IGNO, I think it's giving us a head start. experience which I'm sharing with you that uh, to teach the foreign language there is and we are uh, I assume we are teaching the adults not the child's so there is a main problem in the teaching the foreign language is that there is no difficulty in uh, teaching them the written we have no difficulty in teaching them the listening uh, capabilities but when the spoken capability we want to develop there is difficulties because the mother thing mother tongue obstructs the person to learn the foreign language so uh, what weightage uh, has been given in this program to the spoken and the second uh, point i would like to that the comparison language is also the representative of the culture so the culture of india and the culture of spain so we have to uh, add the many words if if we venture into that area uh, we can search many words that is, uh, is spoken in india that that is spoken in uh, spain and like many items of food 
many items of so if we can <coughs> compare this our students who are uh, learning spain spanish in india they can they can uh, learn the language uh, more uh, effectively thank you very much <laughs> okay this were the last but most difficult one to answer huh? Um, well, thanks again to uh, Internet. We can uh, do video conferencing, um, any means of uh, like Skype and all these things to promote the oral uh, skills. Then, um, as uh, we are planning in the uh, short term, there will be another programs that introduce much uh, way to oral speak. Uh, through semi-blended uh, learning program and so on. Then um, for the second question, there are many theories. Uh, okay, there are many theories about if comparative uh, approach is the best one to learn a language. I just leave it to the experts, and uh, I don't compromise myself. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, we, have, we have already planned a blended learning program for those who cannot access Internet. Uh, there, there is time is not permitting. His Excellency has to leave, so also our Vice Chancellor has important engagements. And with so much warmth and understanding, a thank you looks very, very formal. But uh, on behalf of the School of Foreign Languages, on behalf of the School of Humanities, I sincerely, and on my personal behalf, I sincerely thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, Dr. Oscar Pujol, Registrar, uh, uh, Mr. Tolia, Anna, and all my colleagues from IGNU, guests. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Well.